Hey guys, let's see where we're at. How's that? How's this, guys? Can you see me okay? Can you see me? All right. Hello. Nate Grimsman here. Uh, it's, uh, let's see here. It's, uh, 30 days to believing right. And we are on day number 19. Can you believe this, guys? Day number 1919. I hope these teachings are helping you. And I really, uh, hope that you're going through each one and writing down notes and things like that. So to begin, day 19, let's start with a prayer. Lord, uh, thank you for today. Lord, thank you that today is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord, for speaking through me and helping someone out there have some hope and some revelation through your name, Jesus, and through your word. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, guys. All right, so uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about slavery mentality. I talked about it a little bit, uh, you know, in the beginning. I talk a little bit about this. Um, I might uh, reiterate some things that you heard before, but I really want you to get this, okay, because it's really helped me in my walk with Jesus, is that uh, I'm talking to you about slavery mentality versus sonship, okay, or daughtership or however you look at that, okay? So, uh, so when you're in the world system, when you're born in the flesh, when you're born in this world, you're automatically under the law, okay? You're automatically in, um, <clears throat> in the flesh, which is controlled by sin because of the sin nature, right? And so the, uh, the enemy, the, the devil, uses, all, uh, uses our conscience against us, our conscience, and uses our, uh, our knowledge of good and evil against us, and really, um, <clears throat> really keeps us in slavery through fear of death fear of punishment, okay? So the Bible says that uh, people, their whole lives are uh, afraid of death, okay? That's what the enemy uses against people, fear of death, okay? And so Jesus took uh, took all that stuff on the cross for us. He died for us, right? And so he has now the king, the keys to the kingdom of, uh, you know, he has the keys to, the, uh, to hell and the grave, right? To death, he has those keys, okay? So in Christ, you don't have to worry about death or dying or anything anymore because the Bible says to be, uh, <clears throat> to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So once you leave your flesh casing, I call it, right, your flesh, once you leave your flesh and you die in your flesh, you immediately are with the Lord, the Bible says, okay? So to be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. Isn't that cool? So in reality, you don't actually have to fear death at all because it's going to be like a blink of an eye. Okay? So all of a sudden, you're with the Lord. It's not going to be some big, scary thing. It's going to be instant. Okay? So that's the first thing I want to comfort you with is that you don't have to be afraid of death any longer in Christ. Okay? So slavery mentality is, is, uh, is taught to us and programmed in us since childhood. Okay? And so um, the world system is all based on that. You work really hard, you're going to get a lot of money and you'll be happy. Or you don't work hard, you're going to be punished. Or if, you, if, you're, if you're nice to people, it'll be nice to you. It's all kind of like a slavery type thing, okay? Uh, what I mean is that if, if you look how the world system's built, it's built on self-righteousness, right? Everybody thinks they're good people, but they're really not. They're all sinners, right? We all have sin to come, come short of the glory of God. And slavery mentality is like a, a, a reward punishment type a, a type of thing. Think about it this way. How do I say this, Lord? Okay, so um, so people don't do stuff for fear of punishment, and then they what happens is is that that fear of punishment controls them and pulls them to do things they don't want to do. Okay. So the key to getting out from underneath that whole uh, thing with doing, doing something in my flesh I don't want to do, you know, in Romans 7, Paul talked about it. If I'm doing something in my flesh, it's not sin. It's not me doing it, sin that dwells in me. See, he taught us how to get out of it was through no condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Okay. So he taught us how to get out from underneath that. And <clears throat> so when you are a, uh, 
So let's just go through the scripture real quick. Galatians 4, 7. Um, I'm going to sneeze real quick. Hold on. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, so so you are uh, no longer a slave, but uh, God's child. And since you were a child, God has made you also an heir. Okay, so think about that. Galatians 4, 7 for a second. So you are no longer a slave. Okay, so the King James says, whereby thou are no longer... Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Okay, so you have to really rethink where you're at. Okay, are you coming from a slavery mentality when it comes to the Lord? When it comes to um, when it comes to uh, interacting with Him? When it comes to your confession of sin? When it comes to things like that? Okay, or your confession of faith or whatever? Do you think God is a taskmaster? And he's your slave owner, okay? I used to think that. So I used to think God was like this mean man in the sky that wanted to burn everybody in the lake of fire. And so I uh, so I learned that if I did a lot of works, if I did a ton of stuff, if I prayed a lot, if I won a lot of people to Jesus and all that stuff, then God is going to love me more and bless me more, okay? And so I learned a, a slave, I came from a slavery mentality of if I do really good, then the master's really going to like me. And if I do bad, the master's going to punish me and throw me in the stockade or whatever, you know, or whatever, you know, beat me up or whatever. Okay. So think of it as like slavery to sonship. That's you're going from slavery to sonship. So people's mindsets need to be deprogrammed from a slavery, a spiritual slavery mentality. Okay. Um, in Romans seven, one, this really helped me here. If you, if you read Romans 7, 1, it says, Do you not know, uh, brothers and sisters, for I'm speaking to those who know the law, that the law has authority over someone as long as that person lives. Okay, so he's talking about the law of Moses there, right? So the law has, uh, um, for example, by law, a married woman is bound to her husband as long as he is alive. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law that binds her to him. Okay, so think of it like this. I, I talked about it a little bit earlier. Um, so it goes on Romans 7, 4. Um, so my brothers and sisters, you also died to the law through the body of Christ, okay? That you might belong to another, to him who raised, raised from the dead in order that we might bear fruit unto God, okay? So think of it this way. You were married to the law. You were a, you were a slave of sin before Christ in your flesh, okay? You were living in the flesh and you were a slave to sin, Jesus said that those who practice sin, who are making a practice, are slaves to sin. So he basically said everybody is a slave to sin, and he came to set the captives free, okay? So imagine you are married to the world system and to slavery and to bondage and to the law, okay? And then Christ appears and dies on our behalf. We die with him, and then we resurrect with him in our spirit, right? And we have newness of life and we live over here now. So this is the old covenant, right? Like the old way. And this is the new way, see? And so now you are no longer here. You are in the spirit. You are now born again. You're no longer under those old laws and commandments and things, okay? You are set free from sin, from the power of sin, so you can bear fruit unto God in true holiness and righteousness, which is faith in Christ is the only way you can be righteous and holy. Okay. So, <laughs> so, uh, so what kind of mindset do you have? What kind of mindset have you, uh, <clears throat> been having lately? Okay. So think of it this way. Um, if you are someone that believes if you do a bunch of stuff, then God is going to love you more then you're in a slavery mentality. If you are, uh, in the mindset that if you uh, if you don't do stuff or if you do something wrong, then God is mad at you and going to punish you. Then you're in a slavery mentality. Okay. <clears throat> I used to actually think this is how bad this gets sometimes guys. Cause remember I was in a cult, you know, I was under a lot of false doctrine. So the Lord's pulled me out of a lot of stuff. I don't know everything. Like I always say, I'm just some guy trying to help people. I might be off a little bit and what I teach sometimes, Hey, you know what? Give me some grace and just take the things that you feel are from God, okay? But <clears throat> I used to actually believe that if I went one mile over the speed limit, that I was sinning 
in that if I died while going one mile over the speed limit, then like if I got in a car accident going one mile over the speed limit, because I was sinning, then I was going to burn in hell forever. Think of how crazy that sounds, guys. But there's many Christians that have the same type of doctrine. Not, maybe not that extreme, but they think like they did one little thing wrong and, and if they die, they're going to burn in hell, okay? Guys, it's not how it works. You're born again, you're forgiven forever. You're guaranteed heaven. Sin is just going to destroy your life. That's what sin does, okay? Sin destroys your flesh and your life. If you're born again, and you, you know, you, you can relax. So I used to actually be in this, in this mindset of, uh, of fear while I drove because I was afraid I was going to go one mile over the speed limit and sin against God. Can you imagine being that sin focused? Can you imagine how tormented I really was? I was so tormented. Think of driving down the road and being afraid to go one mile over the speed limit by accident. And if you did it by accident and maybe you died while you were doing it, you are going to burn in hell. That's how afraid I was of God. That was the extreme of slavery mentality. And this was when I was saved. I was taught wrong. See, you can teach people wrong. So rightly divide the word of God. So God loves you if you go fast on the freeway or if you don't go fast on the freeway. The problem with going fast on the freeway is that it's a bad testimony to other people, right? Also, you could hurt somebody. You could hurt yourself. You could get a ticket. See, you could hurt your community, you know, drive into a building or something, right? So that's the reason we don't do that. Not because we're afraid we're going to burn in a lake of fire. You see the difference, guys? Sonship versus slavery. So where are you in your life? Do you believe that you're still a slave, that God still interacts with you like you're this slave? Like you always ask God, what should I do? What should I do? I don't want to screw up. I don't want to screw up. I knew somebody one time that everything was about the perfect will of God. If I missed the perfect will of God and this person was so paranoid about the perfect will of God, they may have missed a lot of stuff in their life. Okay, it's fine to be aware of God's will and want to hear his voice and things, but you can't go to extremes that God's going to punish you, you know, if you accidentally make the wrong choice. How are you supposed to live in freedom if you're afraid to make choices? Become mature in your faith and believe that God's with you. And if you make a choice that God can work it out for the good, if it maybe was the wrong choice at the time, see? So you don't want to be a, you don't want to have a slavery mentality. A slavery mentality will lead to death and it'll lead to, uh, um, it'll lead to torment. Okay. So the, remember the mind of the flesh, the mind of the flesh, it's, uh, it will lead you to being fleshly, you know, being, um, carnally minded will basically lead you into death. It'll lead you into poverty and torment. Okay. So get out of that old mindset, you know, the, um, eating off the knowledge of the tree of good and evil and eat off the tree of life and learn who your father is. Your father in heaven is gracious and compassionate and full of mercy toward you. Remember I read the scripture there, I think it was Psalm 32, a couple teachings back, a couple days back. I read about how God is merciful and how he looks upon us as though we are, uh, we are, he pities us like a father pities his children right? And he remembers that we're just dust. So he has mercy on you. So you can relax knowing that your father is not a slave driver. He is not your master, like slave, like, you know, I'm going to punish you if you don't do something right today, or if you don't pray 10 hours today, or if you don't read your Bible four times a today, he's not going to do that to you. You are born again. You have peace with God through faith in Jesus Christ. You have been reconciled to the father. See, you're no longer a slave. So these whole teachings are really trying to break this slavery mentality, this spiritual slavery mentality off of God's people, off of you, because it leads you into torment and it leads you into living in your head and being afraid all the time. And, and fear is not from God because perfect love casts out all fear. God is love. He wants to rid you of that fear that you deal with. I was doing ministry somewhere not too long ago and a, um, <clears throat> a lady, she was uh, dealing with mental illness, okay? And she was older. She was probably in her 50s. And 
she uh, she had dealt with uh, really bad trauma, really bad things with uh, men and things like that. I'm not going to go into all the details, but basically this this lady, really nice, sweet lady, was tormented. Okay, and I preached on no condemnation, and I preached on this kind of the similar uh, thing, and this lady came up. And then I did kind of like a prayer for everybody. And then she came up and she testified that for the first time in her life, she felt free in her mind. She said she felt things lift off of her mind. She said she lived in condemnation and guilt over things she did in the past and traumas that happened to her. That she is, that she was free. She said she was free that day. She got free that day from that. And I didn't scream at demons. I didn't do anything like that. I just taught about the goodness of God and how we're sons and daughters of God through faith in Christ. And we're no longer condemned for anything we do. That's really hard for you to get that you're not condemned for anything you do. Because your head wants to condemn you because your head is where the law is, where you're, where you're, uh, where the, the knowledge of good and evil is. It always wants to condemn you. That's your law-based system in there, your works-based. You know, if I do something good, God's going to love me. If I do something bad, God's going to hate me. See, that's the knowledge of good and evil. That's all that stuff right there, okay? So you kind of got to get that. You got to dismantle it. God loves you all the time. He wants you to make good choices so your life can be blessed. You make bad choices, your life gets messed up. <laughs> that's really simple. <laughs> make good choices. That's easy. Okay. Just choose right. Remember the elevator I talked about? Choose that button, the right decision. Don't choose the bad decision. You choose bad decision. It just leads you into torment. Why do it? See? <laughs> and the more you understand who you are in Christ and stuff, the better choices you make and your divine nature starts manifesting more and you don't get tempted like you used to. So you might deal with things like pornography or, or rejection or anger or whatever. The further you go with the Lord, the more he dismantles this stuff from you and you don't get tempted by it anymore. Like I always say, it's kind of like fishing. The enemy, he's fishing. He's, he's got a specific lure. Let's say it's pornography or anger. He sends this lure into the water and there you are, the fish, and you bite on the lure of lust and you bite on it and you eat it and then, then you feel tormented and then what does he do? He throws another one at you, okay? And all he's doing is he's feeding you what he thinks is going to work and he'll just keep feeding the fish the exact same food until you finally realize that that food doesn't taste any good anymore. And then what he does is he tries to find another place in your armor where he can, or inside you, right, through your armor to try to get you tempted again. But Paul said to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on the helmet of salvation. You're saved forever. Put on that helmet of salvation. You are, you are whole. You are holy. That's who you are. You're saved. You, you have wholeness. You have sozo. The helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. You're righteous all the time. That's who you are in Christ all the time, every second. Don't let anything come against your righteous standing in, with God, your belief in that, okay? And then you put on the belt of truth. The belt of truth holds on everything, right? The belt of truth is what is going to, going to keep everything together. Truth, receiving truth and believing truth through the trials, okay? So you got the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. You have the, sh uh, you have the, uh, the, uh, the, the, um, the belt of truth. You have the shoes of the gospel of peace. So you have those shoes on and the shoes are the ones that make you stand, right? So peace, stand in the gospel, stand in Jesus, okay? Hallelujah. And then you have the shield of faith, right? You have your faith shield that protects you from all the stuff the enemy throws at you. So keep the faith, right? So faith is what gets you through things that protects you from stuff and gets you through things. And then the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God in the sword of the spirit can dismantle these things inside of you and these lies that you believe and all this, this junk that, you know, all this stuff that's trying to torment you, the sword of the spirit can dismantle it. Okay. And then it goes on, uh, you know, say praying always in, with the will of God, the, praying the Holy Ghost, basically praying in the Spirit. Okay, so pray in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> so, you guys, just believe, right? This is like day 19. I'm still saying the same thing. Okay, so hallelujah. So, um, Romans 8.15. Uh, so, it says that, 
so when you're when you're in slavery mentality, when you're dealing with slavery, uh, spiritual slavery, you're in fear. Okay, so everybody has fears that they have built up through their life, either through trauma or through sin or through a fear of judgment, fear of people, fear of whatever. Okay, so everybody has fears built up inside of them. So in their soul, right in their their strongholds and God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power, love and a sound mind. Right. And it also it says in Romans eight fifteen it says, for you did not receive the spirit of slavery again to fall back into fear. Okay. So you did not receive a spirit of slavery of fear. You didn't receive that you, but you received the spirit of adoption. Okay. Uh, as sons whom we cry out, Abba father, Abba father, daddy father. Okay. So maybe you just need to start saying, daddy, father, come help me. Daddy, 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 help me, help me, help me. Instead of, oh God, I sinned today. I went one mile over the speed limit. I don't want to burn in a lake of fire. Please help me overcome all this condemnation and guilt. I'm such a horrible, wicked sinner. I don't know what to do. Guys, Jesus already knows you're a sinner. You've already confessed him as Lord and Savior, and you've asked him to forgive your sins, okay? He already knows that. He already knows everything about you, past, present, future. He died for everything, all the stuff that you're ever going to do. Okay, so remember, uh, this is a good one. I like this version. It says, God's spirit doesn't make us slaves who are afraid of him. Think of that. God's spirit doesn't make us slaves who are afraid of him. Instead, we become his children and call him our father. So you are a child of God, not a slave anymore. And the slavery mentality has to be dismantled. It just takes time. So earlier I talked about Romans 7, how we're, we are, uh, <clears throat> we're slaves and then we become sons. Okay, so I want you to get this too. This is kind of good too, if you can listen to me for a second. So you have your, your old mindset, okay, of slavery, you know, punishment, do good, do bad, punishment, rewards, all this stuff here. Okay. Righteousness by works and all these, um, slavery mentality stuff. Okay. And then you have the sonship mentality where you're loved and you're righteous and you're holy and all that stuff by faith alone. Okay. So you, it's like you died to this, right? With Christ. And now you resurrected over here. Okay. Now you're married to Christ. So before you're married to the law, you're married to the flesh, right? Now you're married to Christ. Okay. So in the same way, if you think about it, you were, it's like if you were married to an abuser, okay? Imagine being married to abuser. Some of you know what it's like to be married to abuser. Um, but like, just, you know, just imagine if someone's married to an abuser who beats them up and makes them feel bad about themselves and condemns them and says negative things and all that stuff over here. Imagine that's the slavery mentality. Okay. That's the slave life, spiritual slavery. Over here, we have the really good husband. So this person goes away. They, you know, you get divorced from him or whatever. Now you have the new husband who's loving and kind. He's always kind to you. He's always loving. He's unconditionally uh, in love with you all the time. He, he treats you really well. Okay. See, you kept, you keep all, when you get saved, you still have the programming from the slave driver, from the bad husband in your mind, in your emotions, right? Your soul. You were programmed a certain way. And then you get married to Christ over here. And he is really nice and everything. But you are coming from that negative area. And you don't realize yet how good God is. And so we interact with God like we're still married to the abuser. We still think God is like this abuser or this mean person. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's like walking with Jesus is learning who he is, who your father is, who you're married to. You're married to Christ. You're one spirit with him. He has great favor for you and your family. You're blessed. You're not cursed, right? All these things are in Christ. And we just have to learn that we're no longer over here in our slavery mentality. We're now sons of God. We're married to Christ. We're not married to the world anymore. And so that's why transformation of the mind is really important. And that's why fellowship of the Holy Ghost is super important, right? Because he can start teaching you the uh, nature of Father God. And as you learn the nature of Father God, you can start experiencing transformation quicker than if you just read the Bible all the time, right? And just tried to read the Bible all the time. You need the Holy Spirit 
You need the Holy Spirit and the Word, not just the Bible. You need the Word and the Holy Spirit, okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need the Holy Ghost. Do you have the Holy Spirit today? If you do not have the Holy Spirit, it's time for you to give your whole entire existence to the Lord Jesus Christ. I always say it in every broadcast, or I try to. You need to give your whole existence to the Lord Jesus Christ. So what you can do right there, you can just you can just you can just hold out your heart arms and just say, Lord, here's my entire existence, Lord Jesus. I give you my whole entire heart. I confess you as Lord and Savior. And Lord, here's my whole entire existence, my life, my body, my family, everything, Lord. I just give you my soul, everything. Cleanse me in your blood and fill me, Holy Spirit, to overflow. And let me learn how to be a son or a daughter of God. Let me learn, Lord, and help me not be a slave to the old mindsets ever again in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So. Some practical things you can do, okay? Oh, real quick, we're on the Periscope app, just letting you know. If you're watching this on Periscope, you can tap the screen. You can give me hearts if you want. That helps the broadcast get into the trending and things like that. So you can tap the screen there. Then you just go like that, right? Tap the screen. You can give up to 500 hearts each broadcast. Also, I'm just going to do something real quick before I keep going. I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to do... Ooh, I'm going to do this. Okay, there we go. Do that. And then... Um, so... Some practical things how you could how you could do this is uh, um, it, so just some practical things how this works uh, or how you overcome it is like okay so when you're going to make a decision in life okay and it, you know it could be a big decision or whatever you want to seek the Lord right but you don't want to be afraid to make a mistake okay that's what a slave does a slave is afraid to make a mistake in fear of punishment okay. A son knows they're going to make mistakes, but the father is always there to correct the mistakes. Okay? So the Bible says that, you know, um, <clears throat> that the Lord directs our paths. Okay? So uh, if you, uh, it says, um, uh, acknowledge the Lord in all your ways and uh, he will direct your path, I believe. Okay? I think that's it. Acknowledge, your lo- acknowledge the Lord in all your ways and he shall direct your paths. Okay? So anyway. Yeah, so acknowledge the Lord. When you're making a decision and he'll direct you, don't be afraid to make decisions. If you got to make a business decision or whatever, don't be afraid. Don't come from a place of slavery, spiritual slavery, of being afraid to screw up your life. Instead, Lord, I acknowledge you with this decision and I really feel in my heart I'm going to go this route. If you don't want me to go this route, talk with me, Lord. And then, you know, if you feel like you're supposed to go that route, go that route. And if it's a mistake or it leads down a route that wasn't that great... God will direct your path. He'll still get you on the right path. So what I learned is in decision making is to always acknowledge the Lord and expect him to direct you in the path you should go. Okay. But not be paranoid. Sometimes when you're paranoid and fearful, then you can't hear from the Lord correctly or he doesn't, um, He's not like a slave driver, so he doesn't necessarily tell you exactly what to do all the time. He wants you to be free. He wants you to experience that God kind of life, eternal life, okay? So it's not like God saying, okay, make this decision, make it. That's slavery mentality, guys. That's, that's the slaves. Okay, master, what do you want me to do? You want me to go left? You want me to go right, master? You know, sometimes there are times in life where God will give you direction here and there and then down. Yeah, absolutely. Be led, right, by the Spirit. But you don't, what I'm trying to get at is don't be paranoid and fearful that you're going to make this horrible choice that God's going to forget about you and leave you or you're going to destroy your life forever. If you really feel like it's the Lord leading you in a place, just, you know, go for it and, and, uh, the Lord will direct your path. Okay. Always seek godly counsel and things like that too. But you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to encourage you not to operate in fear about life. Okay. So that's what the Lord kind of showed me too. I believe anyway, is that he wants me to live and not be afraid to make choices for my life. To be able to direct, you to have him direct my ways, you know, like I can make a decision and know that, you know, it might be a little off here, but God will wind it back to the place where I'm supposed to be. So don't be afraid, you know, you know, let's say you're going to college or you have a major right now and you're afraid it might be the wrong major or whatever. You know what? If that's where you're at right now and God's not putting your heart to change your major, maybe, you know, maybe stay there and see, you know, I'm not trying to give you like counsel right now, but I'm trying to like, you know, maybe just see how the Lord directs your path. Okay, the Lord will direct your path. He'll make the crooked way straight. 
So don't be paranoid. So that's one instance you can do is not be paranoid about decisions in your life because God is with you and God is faithful to you and he'll direct your path and make your crooked way straight. Okay. All right. So that's one. Uh, <clears throat> two, uh, what else? Okay. So when you, uh, when you do something you don't want to do, let's say, just say you screw up and sin or do something bad. And you know it's wrong, okay? Everybody knows what sin is or what's bad, okay? So you know when you're doing something bad or whatever, okay? So let's say you got some issue. And instead of going into the thought process that God's mad at you or the Holy Spirit has left you or that, you know, all these things. Instead of that, that's a slavery mentality, okay? That's, that's master's mad at me. I didn't do right. See? My master's mad at me. I didn't do right. See, that's spiritual slavery mentality. Instead, Lord... I made this mistake or Lord, I'm struggling with this. I know you're not mad at me. Can you help me? Can you help me process through this? Why do I do this? I just, I don't really want to agree with this sin or this issue anymore in my soul or my flesh. I I don't want to get caught up in that anymore. Can you help me? Do you see the difference? One is slavery. Lord, I'm afraid. Oh, I hope you're not mad at me. Oh, the Holy Spirit left me. I don't know what to do, right? Over here, you're like, you know, the Holy Spirit never leaves me. He knows the things that I do or the things before I even do them. Uh, and I know it's I'm part of who I really am. Lord, can you help me uh, find my true self in this area so I don't go into this junk anymore? Do you see the difference there? Slavery versus sonship, okay? So another thing uh, that, you know, that... that uh, uh, is, is money too. Okay. So money's a whole nother thing. So I talked about money yesterday, I think. Uh, so, uh, in slavery, we think we have to uh, give God a lot of money. Okay. And then God will bless us. Okay. <laughs> so we think uh, we have to, you know, we have to give our, we have to give a lot of money and God will bless us in return. Okay. You know, uh, you are already blessed to give a lot of money. See, you're already blessed to give a lot of money. So receive from God, and then you can give from your heart. I just finished uh, reading something last night with Paul, Second Corinthians, I think, uh, 9 or 8 or whatever, about giving in Macedonia, but they're taking the offering. And Paul's whole thing was give from your heart, right? Give from your heart. It's about generosity and, and showing your love towards your brethren and showing your love towards people. That's what giving's about and honoring God, not about, you know, if you know, if I don't give a certain amount every month, then God's gonna curse me, or if I do this, God's not gonna like me, or or if I don't do that, God's not gonna like me. If I don't help in the building fund, then you know, then I'm not a good Christian. You know, that's all slavery mentality, right? Sonship is, hey Lord, I got this money here. Where you want me to sow it, Lord? Hey, Lord, I want to help my church, Lord. Hey, Lord, I want to bless that person, Lord. See the difference? So don't, so just disconnect from the slavery mentality and start living in sonship, okay? So uh, another thing is that uh, uh, um, you can start catching your thoughts and your emotions, right? You start catching them. You can catch it and go, that's a slavery thought right there. And you'll see it too. If you, if you start paying attention to some of the stuff that comes through your head or your emotions, you'd be like, oh, how did I get that? Oh, that's a slavery mentality. I'm not thinking like a son today. I'm thinking like a slave. And you got to repent, you know, change your mind. You know, I'm not thinking like a slave anymore. I'm not a slave, <laughs> right? I used to think if I didn't read the Bible every day, then I was going to burn in hell. Think about that, guys. Some of you probably think that. If you don't read the Bible every day, you, you know, God's mad at you and you're going to burn in hell. You sinned against him. I used to think that until I was doing it every day. And then I got burned out. And I'm like, Lord, I'm reading the Bible, but I'm not reading it out of love. I'm reading out of works. So anything like out of works that you're doing, this slavery mentality. You're just doing it because you're afraid. Afraid of not doing it. You work self-righteousness. Pull out of it. So what did I do? I stopped, uh, I stopped uh, reading the Bible when I didn't feel like reading the Bible. Might be a shocker to some of you, but sometimes I don't feel like reading the Bible. I'm being honest. And you know what? When I read the Bible now, I love it and it speaks to me. I can read the Bible now and it actually speaks to me. Before it was like, it was like I'd read the Bible, I have no clue what it just said. <laughs> like I'd read the Bible, but okay, I got my psalm done for today. I'm, I'm, I'm righteous today because I read my Bible. Right? It's good to read your Bible. Absolutely. I would say don't read your Bible, but think about it. See? Just think about it. How do you do things? Do you do things out of slavery mentality, fear, condemnation? Or are you doing things out of love and joy and because your heart desires it? So now if I go a little bit without reading the Bible, I miss it. I come back to it and go, oh, Lord, I want to read the Bible. And then I read it and it's like it speaks to me. Okay? It's like, wow, like last night I, 
I read some and I was just like, wow, I read the whole couple chapters and everything I got, boom. I was like, wow. But before I read those chapters over and over, didn't get nothing. Didn't get nothing. I'd read and be like, what's that mean? I don't understand that. Lord, this is confusing. Now it's like, hey, Lord, I don't feel like reading the Bible today. Oh, I'll read it today. Oh, I feel like reading it. Boom, there it is. I'm like, whoa, Lord, that was easy. (laughs) See? Sonship versus slavery. Condemnation versus freedom. See? Works versus grace. Old covenant, new covenant. Condemnation, freedom. See? Amazing. Punishment, rewards, all rewards. No punishment, punishment. See? Here, you have, uh, you have, uh, uh, what is it called? You have punishment here, and then over here you have chastening, right? So chastening is good. So you want to be chastened by the Lord, okay? So if you are doing weird stuff and God's trying to get you on the back, on the right path, it's, a, it's good to be chastened. The Bible says that if, in Hebrews, it says that if you're not chastened, then you're not, you're like a bastard, basically, I guess. That's what Paul said, the wording, I don't know, right? So like every son endures chastening. So relax, it's all good. God wants you on the right path. And that path is a path of righteousness and holiness, real holiness and righteousness, not the stuff that religion tells you it is, okay? It comes from your heart and your soul or in your emotion or in your spirit, right? That's where it comes from. Real holiness, real righteousness comes from the inside and then it manifests in the outward. Love comes from the inside, manifests in the outward, not the other way around, right? Religion teaches us how to be righteous, right? It teaches us how to be righteous in their own mind, right? Like this is what you do to be righteous. And then God God makes us righteous and then transforms us into righteousness, into righteous people. So that's different. So here in the flesh and slavery mentality, you do do's and don'ts, and that makes you righteous. If you wear a hat, a certain hat, or if you don't eat a certain food, that makes you righteous. Or if you keep a certain day holy, that makes you righteous. Over here, you have righteousness and holiness inside of you. And then the character of God starts manifesting, which is love and love, right? And if you walk in love and you walk in the fruit of the spirit, then there is no law uh, that can condemn you, okay? It's amazing. You're not under any law when you're in the, in love. Okay. It's amazing. Huh? Think about that. It's pretty cool. Hallelujah. Cause love, you know, fulfills the law. If you love your neighbors yourself, who's going to be against you? Hallelujah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I'm feeling good right now. I feel the presence of the Lord guys. I'm going to pray for you. Uh, I'm glad that, uh, you're tuning into these. This is day 19. Can you believe it? Day 19. Uh, this is Nick Grimsman. I'm, uh, I'm here with you. <laughs> All right. So, Lord, I pray for everybody out there today that watches. I pray that they, Lord, that, that that slavery mentality, that spiritual slavery mentality, we've broken off their mind today and off their soul, their emotions. We break it. And, Lord, we thank you for the angels that minister to your people. I thank you for great breakthroughs, Lord, great breakthroughs for your people, Lord. And thank you for these these 19 days that we've had together. I pray, Lord, for the rest of these, these days, Lord, up to the 30 days, be just a great blessing for everyone watching this and doing these teachings, Lord, and learning. And I pray, Lord, that you, you continue to transform them and remember your word, that he that began a good work in us shall complete it to the day of Christ Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Think about that guys. He that complete, he that started a work in you. So the Holy Spirit started a work and you shall complete it to the day of Christ Jesus. Your job is to agree with truth. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) That's your job. Agree with truth. Okay. The truth is God loves you. This is Nick Grimson from the father's friends. Thanks for tuning in. You can go to our website. Um, uh, the fathersfriends.org. You can get our uh, ministry resources on our online store. My book, Defeating Mental Illness, is on there. Uh, also, you can go and see the events page. Uh, our my itineraries on the website. Also, you can give a donation to help the web, uh, the, the website, the ministry, to pay for the website. Uh, we have a nonprofit organization, so thank you for sowing into the ministry and helping. Um, and uh, if you want to become a monthly supporter by signing up with auto donation to become a monthly partner, be great. Ministry partners get a special code to get all of our resources for free. And so uh, we give you that special code once you sign up online as a ministry partner. Thank you so much for your support of the ministry. Um, 
couldn't do it without you. With uh, couldn't do it without God using people like you to help the ministry. Thank you. And uh, what else? Uh, that's about it, guys. Uh, thank you so much. Nick Gerns in here. See you later. Bye.